I want to show you how you can use use tax in Dynamics 365 Business Central. There are some key setup things you must do. And then in the transactions, we'll take a look at that. And finally, the reporting. The reporting is important to make sure you get the information that you need for compliance. So let's get started. One of the key setups is tax areas. This is where you identify which jurisdiction you're in. And more importantly, which tax details are included in that jurisdiction. For example, I click on Beverly Hills here. I have a number of tax details that roll up to make the proper taxation for use tax in Beverly Hills. You can see those here. I've got a city tax, state of California tax, Los Angeles County, and a special district tax. You'll want to set a tax area up for every area that you collect and remit tax to. Once you've identified the areas, you'll set up tax details, which specify whether something will be taxed or not, and at what rate it will be taxed. You'll set up tax group codes to determine if something's taxable or not taxable. You can see here how I've set up the jurisdiction for Beverly Hills. Taxable items are gonna be taxed at 0.75%, and you can see the California state tax as well, and I've got others down here. So again, the tax details are rolled up into the tax area and supply the proper calculation and reporting for tax compliance. I'm gonna create a typical purchase invoice that would involve use tax. And typically use tax is gonna be for a GL account item or a fixed asset item. The first one we'll do here is a GL account. I'll look up the account, repairs and maintenance. Let's use that. This is pretty standard stuff. This is how I set up a purchase invoice to pay an amount to a vendor. Now what I wanna do is I wanna have the tax area code set up here. I'm gonna mark this as a use tax item. And then I'm gonna select the appropriate tax group code. In this case, it's for supplies. I could have multiple lines on this, some taxable, others not taxable. But for clarity, I have one line. And you'll notice that tax is being identified by the tax code and the tax group, but it's not being calculated as part of the total invoice. And that's because I'm gonna self-assess the use tax on this item. We can look at the posting to see how this is gonna happen. If we look at the posting preview, we can see a couple things. We can look at the tax entry, and we can see that it's gonna create tax detail entries for the different details I identified in the tax area. You can see those here, the tax is being calculated at those various rates. But also, let's take a look at the general ledger, because this is interesting. What I'm gonna be doing is, I'm gonna take the total amount of my taxes plus my purchase and apply it to the GL account that I specified on the line. In this case, repairs and maintenance expense. The total amount here of the line plus the taxes, and then the credit is to taxes payable. So at the end of a quarter or the end of a month or whenever I report taxes, I'm gonna reconcile the tax payable lines with a tax report. You can see here also that the only amount going to accounts payable is the amount of the invoice, the amount of that line without the taxes. Let's look at another example. This is a purchase invoice for a fixed asset. You can see that I have it filled out already. I've got the amounts. I have the tax area code identified I'm also identifying this as a use tax item. I'm gonna self-assess the use tax in this case because my vendor does not collect tax in my local area. So again, I've got the total amount of the fixed assets. I have no taxes on the invoice because that is correct. We can look at the posting preview here and see what's gonna happen at the general ledger. The total amount of the purchase, which includes the cost of the equipment and the self-assessed use tax is gonna to go to the equipment GL. You can see the tax payable here and finally the accounts payable credits. So this is exactly what I want. I would go ahead and post these and I would be done with the transaction. Finally, let's take a look at the reporting. The reporting on this is pretty straightforward. We go to the sales tax collected screen here. I'm just gonna look at the use tax. There's different levels of detail we can look at. Let's run the summary first. Put a date filter in here, then I'll run it. This is a summary level report 
for the period that I identified. You can see that here. I've got taxable sales amount, the tax amount. It's identified in this report as sales tax, but it's actually use tax. And we'll see that in the next report we look at, which is going to be the detail report. So let's look at the detail report, use the same setup, preview it. Here's a report here. This has individual transactions for which use tax was calculated and accrued. And we can see the use tax marker right here. For these transactions, it shows the sales tax amount and the fact that it's used tax. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, we've got a total on this of $2,003. So what I would do is use this report on a regular basis to reconcile with my sales tax payable and complete my reporting to the government. Then when it came time to pay the tax, I would write out a check to the various governments and debit the taxes payable. And then I'd be done. The way I like to look at the setup is I start with the compliance requirements for my different areas in which I do business and I'm required to collect use tax and report on use tax to make sure that it's set up to make it easy to comply with the requirements of my local government. I then analyze the transaction processing to make sure that the transactions that I execute properly calculate and recognize use tax when I want it. And finally, I look at the setup. In my experience in Business Central is that it's relatively easy to set up. It will take some maintenance as tax rates change, but it's pretty straightforward and easy to use.